Hi, and welcome back. So, after having told you about the general components of a thesis, it's now time to start right. And so, you're now sitting in front of that computer screen, or sitting in front of that white sheet of paper with absolutely nothing on it, and now you're supposed to start writing. That's a very difficult moment for almost anyone who is trying to write a thesis, so relax, you're going to be fine. And I know how you feel, but anyone will feel that way sitting in front of a white paper. So you got to get started in some way. So how can you do that? Well, I think the way how you can get over that initial hesitation to start writing is to set up collections. What kind of collections? Well, first of all, you need to collect what you think could be your major findings. No matter what kind of experiments uh, you did, you got some results. Maybe you even just found out that something wouldn't work the way anyone anticipated it would work. Doesn't matter. Try to consider what you would declare the major findings of your thesis and list them. Make a collection of them. At this point, it doesn't really matter in what order you put them, as long as you have them on a piece of paper. What are the major findings of your thesis? And that, of course, will be very important both to write later on the abstract of your thesis, to summarize what the key findings are, and this will also go directly to the results section of your thesis, because your major findings will constitute the results section and they will also be described in the figures of your thesis. So once you're done with that collection, you might want to start a different collection, and that is a collection of the points explaining the background and the significance of your findings. So, why is it important? Why was it important to raise the question that you have been trying to address in your thesis? Try to imagine you would explain your thesis to your little brother and sister, and so you would have to supply him or her with some background information. That's the kind of thing that you need to collect. Again, don't worry about the order, just keep collecting them. What kind of points do you need to raise in order to make it understandable why you even started these experiments? And as you might imagine, this collection of points explaining background and significance that will go into the introduction chapter of your thesis. So finally, once you're done with that, you might also try to collect points and pieces of literature that would agree or that would disagree with what you found. So you try to find the agreements and the controversies of your findings with the previous literature. And this is what obviously will then go to the discussion of your thesis. So once you're done with these kinds of collections of several points, it's now time to start with the actual writing of your thesis. What I want to raise first is the order of how you write your thesis. I definitely wouldn't write it in the order as it appears in the final book. Instead, I would do the following. First of all, try to phrase a preliminary title and abstract of your thesis. This is not to be published, but this is, will be serving as a guideline for yourself to write the rest of it. So you try to phrase in one sentence, what is the key finding that I got? That's your preliminary title. And then you try to summarize briefly on half a page what you think are the major points you want to make in your thesis. Do that in a preliminary way. You definitely need to go back, but try to write an abstract just to guide yourself. And then at the latest, 
you start assembling the figures. That's the first thing you need to do because everything else that you write in your thesis will be surrounding those figures. The figures are the key points of your thesis. So you start assembling them. You don't need to do fancy PowerPoints and, and other kinds of uh, images at this point. You just roughly draw them on a piece of paper so you know what should go into the figures. And then you would also start phrasing the figure legends that describe what the reader is supposed to see there or that describe at least the kind of experiments that were carried out in order to come up with what the reader can see on the images. So once you have assembled the figures and put them in some order, then it will be very easy for you to write the results section because the, every chapter of the results section will typically describe one of the figures. Once you're done with the results, it will be easy for you to figure out what should go into the materials and methods section because that should be corresponding to the results. The order of the materials and methods section does not need to correspond to the order of the results section, but the content as such should be corresponding to the results. So now it's time to write materials and methods. You can usually do that even when you are a little bit more tired because it should be done carefully, but you don't need to be very creative when writing the materials and methods section. That's different for the introduction. Once you know what kind of results you want to describe, now it's time to write the introduction and provide the reader with the necessary background telling him or her why you even did the experiments and what the specific questions behind your experiments have been. That goes to the introduction. And once you have written the results, it's much easier to focus your introduction on the points that are really relevant to the result section rather than starting to write a review, which happens in many cases. Once you're done with the introduction and with the result section in mind, you are now ready to start with the discussion section. The discussion is usually considered the most difficult part of your thesis because that definitely does require some creative thinking. It's not enough to just reiterate your results. That would be a very poor discussion. Rather, you should now try to see your findings in the context of a general background, you need to try and explain why you agree or disagree with previous literature, and you might also outline future research work. All that is creative, all that you really need to think a lot about. And uh, once the results and the introduction are written, it will be time to write the discussion. As for the references, well, you write them throughout your thesis because you will be citing others, you will be citing articles uh, from elsewhere in the literature throughout your thesis. The acknowledgements you will also be comfortably writing at any time. It's no big deal normally. Just try to think what kind of material and what kind of help you have been using for that you refer to the results section and then you will be thanking these people in the acknowledgements. Now, very importantly, you're not done yet, even though it now looks complete. It's now time, definitely, to go back and write the title and abstract again. This is what is most likely to be read by others. And now, after having written all that, all the previous sections, you're now in a much better position to really summarize the most essential parts of each section introduction, results, and discussion. All that should now be summarized in a very concise way in the title and abstract, and with the previous section having written in mind, you will now be doing a much better job uh, in writing the title and abstract. So now it should be done again. And only then you're done with the first draft of your thesis. So one more point that I want to make is what are the most wanted portions of your thesis? What is most likely to be read or looked at by the reader? Well, that's the title and abstract. 
That's why this is so important to write twice, just to get it as good as you can. And furthermore, it's the figures and figure leggings. Even a superficial leader will have a look at the figures and figure leggings. So the, those are two points, title and abstract on the one hand, the figures and the figure leggings on the other hand, that you need to pay attention to and that you need to draft very carefully. And if you don't believe that, then just click into PubMed, where you find abstracts from anywhere in the biosciences, and you will find out that within these abstracts you find the figures and figure leggings and you don't find anything else. So that's what most people are likely to read. So pay attention to title and abstract and figures as well as figure leggings. After having gone through the order of the components that you write, how do you actually do it? How do you do the actual writing? Again, avoiding what we call a writing block, that you just don't feel capable anymore of proceeding with your writing. So how can you do that? Well, as I said, you first have set up these collections, these collections of findings for the results section, the collections of points of background for the introduction and the collection of comparison with the previous literature for the discussion. Having done that, you can now start assembling these collections in the appropriate order. So you first just outline, you first just make the headlines of uh, your uh, thesis and of the different parts of it without writing whole sentences yet. And once you have that outline, you try to refine it more and more. Make the major points as headlines, even make the minor points as smaller headlines. Try to be as detailed as possible with those outlining headlines. And only once you are done with that, you got a framework. You're, it's now much easier to really write the whole thing. And now you really start writing the sentences. So while you're writing the actual text, the most important advice is don't try to be perfect the first time. Don't write the first sentence, think about, well, is this the best word, or should I put a semicolon in there, or, you know, if you start with that, you will immediately forget what you wanted to write as the second sentence, and then you need to do it all over again, and, and you will never get there. No, you don't do it that way. You keep writing. And even if you run into some difficult uh, part of, the, uh, of, of your uh, thesis and where you don't really know yet how you should properly phrase it, just mark it, just put a few question marks so you know you need to go back to that section and then you keep writing. Just keep writing in simple language. Use your own language. Don't try to be too sophisticated and that's the way how you can get it done, how you can get a first outline. So once you're done with that first draft, now it's time to go back. Now you can try to solve the open questions, those question marks that you have put in the text. Now you can try and look up the literature maybe or think more carefully what exactly you want to say in that part and so on. And maybe it's a good idea you you first go through your thesis looking at the science, looking at the scientific content, and try to get that right. And then you read it again, and now you pay attention to language. And the most important advice here is keep the language clear and simple. Don't try to impress the reader with sophisticated and wording and complicated sentences. They won't like this at all because they want to understand you. So keep it clear and simple. Make short sentences. Then you will be fine. Having done that, you will now also insert the references and cite the literature wherever appropriate, that is, wherever you are making a statement that cannot be concluded from your findings directly, but that can only be appreciated by knowing the previous literature. So those references are important, and I'll refer to the next chapter for that.